Today I want to introduce statistical inference for causal inference. So if you've not seen the previous statistical inference video, please do check up in the top right and I'll, I'll provide a link and check that out and then come back here. Okay, we're dealing with our normal situation. We are interested in the treatment, which is going to the doctor. Uh, we are interested in the population, which is the entire United States of America. Uh, we are interested in the outcome, which is the number of days that people are sick. So we're interested in the causal effect of going to see the doctor on the United States population measured by the number of days they are sick. We're interested in, of course, the average causal effect. So what is the average causal effect? Let's go ahead and do something along the lines of a realistic uh, group experiment. So the realistic group ideal experiment would start off with sampling. So we'll sample uh, little in uh, some smaller number than the population people. So we'll sample little in people. We will then subject one half of them randomly to the treatment, which is going to the doctor after they get a cold. And we'll subject the other one half of them randomly to not the treatment. So they can't go see the doctor when they get the cold. And we'll measure the outcomes. So y sub 1 could be 5 days, and then we don't know. Uh, y sub 2 will be, we don't know, because this person was subjected to not going to the doctor, and 10 days, and so on, until we go ahead and get y sub n, in this case, the little n, so dot, 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 where this person went to the doctor and maybe uh, was sick for 11 days, and on the other case, we don't know. So once again, we had these two problems. Uh, problem number one, we're taking a small sample from the population. We don't get to see every person in the United States. And then problem number two, uh, this is the fundamental problem of causal inference. We don't get to see the counterfactual. So for person number one, we only get to see what happens when they went to the doctor, not what happened when they didn't go to the doctor. So in this case, this is the fundamental problem of causal inference. We would uh, be hard pressed to find person number one's unit level causal effect, which is why we're checking out for the average causal effect. So what's the causal effect on average for a person in the United States? So let me introduce a little bit more notation uh, and then go ahead and get started. So this set of people over here, the set of people that were from our sample and were treated uh, by the doctor randomly. So we, we took our sample, we randomly selected some half the people to be treated by the doctor. I'm gonna call these people uh, sample sub A. Sample sub A. These are the treated people in our sample. And again, I'm using a little person here without a circle around it to uh, designate that this is a sample. Over here, uh, this group of people, I'm going to designate them as uh, sample sub not A. Sample sub not A. Okay. Well, if you remember from causal inf or from statistical inference, we can do some pretty interesting things with these samples. So, for example, with the sample sub A, we can go ahead and use statistical inference in order to determine a specific function of the sample. And the function of the sample might be the average value of days sick. So we could go ahead and we could determine what I'll call y bar sub a, which is the average days sick of the people that were treated in our sample. And we can use statistical inference to do this pretty easily. We can also go ahead and use this on the second sample, so on the sample of people that were not treated by the doctor. And we can go ahead and get y bar sub not a, sub not a. Uh, sometimes people will go ahead and add hats to these as well, so hats to these as well, which will sort of tell us that, hey, these are estimated values from statistical inference. Uh, again, probably in the future I'm going to be uh, deleting this hat as well as this bar because it's just uh, a lot of excess notation. Okay, so you probably already see where this is going, but there is one little trick here. Uh, the trick is that instead of using uh, this y bar sub a and this y bar sub not a and subtracting them in order to get the uh, average causal effect, so we go ahead and we take uh, y bar uh, hat uh, sub a minus uh, y bar uh, sub not a, y bar hat sub not a, and this would equal the average causal effect. We can go ahead and we can do that. Uh, generally what's done, uh, and I'll just go ahead and, and take this back, is we'll go ahead and we'll use a two sample uh, statistical inference in order to do this. So we'll go ahead and we'll take uh, both the uh, sample 
uh, sub a and we'll take the comma and we'll also take our sample sub not a we'll do a two sample statistical inference uh, and if you're interested on how this works I'll go ahead and include a little video uh, in the top right this is kind of one of the last videos from uh, my statistical inference tutorial uh, that uses bootstrapping in order to do this so go ahead and check this out if you're already sort of a statistical inference guru uh, if not uh, I think going through the full series would actually help out a lot um, it's really a fundamental thing to know uh, statistical inference and I think the series is pretty well done so so we can go ahead and take both of these samples and we can go ahead and get the quantity we are looking for y sub a minus y sub not a again this is an estimate and it's an average so you can perhaps add a bar and a hat if you'd like uh, but I'll go ahead and not so we can do two sample two uh, sample statistical inference in order to get this quantity that's wonderful not only can we get this quantity from it we can also get a confidence interval and get a confidence interval for the quantity that we're looking for for the average causal effect and so this would be some q low all the way to a q high and it would tell us hey with some 90 percent confidence the average causal effect of this population well of the treatment on this population as measured in number of days sick is between q low and q high and so this might be between negative two and negative one okay so this is super interesting we can use statistical inference to solve both of our problems problem number one which is hey the fundamental problem of uh, causal inference which is we can never see the counterfactual and problem number two uh, we are only using a sample and we can basically use statistical inference to solve all of these goodies that's super exciting the problem here is that there's a lot of stuff that I'm leaving out uh, the only reason we're able to use statistical inference to solve both of these things is because we've made a lot of hidden assumptions and so these assumptions will include the stable unit treatment value assumption exchangeability assumption positivity assumption uh, perfect measurement assumption and then a double blind test assumption and I'll be going over all of these assumptions in the next couple of videos so to motivate our need for these assumptions I want to show you something a situation uh, where our basically naive using statistical inference to solve this problem goes terribly terribly wrong okay so I hope you join me for the next one